a very serious story that we have covered from the very beginning, taking a twisted turn. The U.S. State Department has ruled that a former Green Beret and his son can be extradited to Japan to face charges for aiding the former Nissan CEO, Carlos Ghosn, in his escape from Japan. Here is Mr. Ghosn explaining to me the torture that he endured when I spoke with him uh, after his own incarceration in Japan. Obviously, I'm not going to make a very full description, but the most perturbating stuff is obviously you have the light all the time in the cell. Um, uh, you couldn't, uh, you have, you can shower twice a week. Um, you have only 30 minutes exposure to the to the light, and only during the working days, because during the weekend there is not enough staff to allow you to, to get to get out and to the to the light. Um, but the most important thing is interrogation can take place at any moment. It goes up to eight hours a day and without the presence of your lawyer. The judicial system in Japan has a 99.4 percent conviction rate. So they torture you the way that Carlos Ghosn was just telling us to get you to agree and admit that, in fact, you are guilty. Michael Taylor, who helped Ghosn escape, is now facing a similar fate. He joined me on the telephone exclusively from Norfolk County Correctional Center in Dedham, Massachusetts. Well, essentially, we've been held here for six months now, um, since May 20th, and uh, the Japanese have requested our extradition. Uh, the Department of Justice and State Department have both agreed, and we're, you know, standing by, waiting to be extradited. You know, our attorneys are doing the best they can, but uh, it's a difficult situation because you don't have the same constitutional rights with the extradition treaty between the United States and Japan as you would as a normal citizen. Now, I understand your situation. The U.S. has this extradition treaty with Japan, and that means if Japan officials want you back in Japan, the U.S. is supposed to send you there. But you are a U.S. citizen. You are a mili former military man. You are a Green Beret, and you have experience in helping people get abducted people. So here's a picture of you with your squad. Uh, I've got a, a pile of letters here from mothers who they say you rescued their children when they were abducted. Tell me about this skill that you have. Well, it's just being able to get into certain areas to help uh, U.S. citizens that the government couldn't help. You know, I'd, I'd often get called by the FBI or the State Department and saying, hey, essentially, we can't do anything to help this American family, and the child has been abducted and taken overseas because of the area. It's difficult. We don't have access to it. Can you help? So, of course, I'm going to help a, a fellow citizen. And we get it done. That's the bottom line. We save those lives and bring them back home where they belong. Yet here we stand, now, get ready to be extradited to a yep. country that's known for torture. Tell me what happened and why you find yourself in this situation. Uh, Carlos Ghosn reached out to you to help him get out of jail while he was getting tortured by Japanese officials. Uh, he did not reach out to me. Other people did. And they told me that um, he is being tortured. I had never thought that in a million years because I thought that Japan was a country similar to ours. But in fact, they do torture people. Even as, uh, as recently as July 28, 2020, their Minister of Justice had held a conference saying, you know, they got to stop torturing people, so on and so forth, so the rest of the world doesn't look at them this way. Um, but yeah, his family had reached out to me and intermediaries explaining he's being tortured. So after I did some research and checked with the legal counsel, found out that jumping bail is not a crime. Um, it was decided upon that he is being tortured, so let's stop the torture. So was it your idea to help him escape by putting him in a music box to get those music box and the band out of Japan and then fly him to, uh, to, to Beirut? We were advised don't give, uh, don't give information on other people who had the idea, so it's best not to comment on that part. But uh, suffice to say that you know, he's not being tortured anymore and he's you know, safe in, in, in his home country. In May of this year, marshals showed up at your house, took you out of bed, and removed you and put you in jail. What happened? Walk us through when you were first arrested, Michael. Yeah, it was probably, I don't know, between 4 or 4.30 in the morning, somewhere in there. Uh, knocks on the door. It was U.S. marshals. Um, not sure how many, maybe 15 or 20. They did have an armored personnel carrier with them. Uh, they were uh, M4 assault rifles, 
body armor, which they're supposed to do. They were very professional. They, you know, took us to, uh, uh, loaded us into vehicles and then took us to the Norfolk County Jail. So it's based off the uh, request by the Japanese prosecutors that we're supposed to be detained. And then, you know, according to the treaty, uh, again, your constitutional rights are aside. You don't have all those constitutional rights that we normally have as American citizens when it comes to a treaty because you have to have very high special circumstances to get bail. So we're not able to have bail. So we've been in jail for, you know, six months now. You are also imprisoned with your son, who's 26 years old. What does your son have to do with all of this? Was he involved in the escape of Carlos Ghosn? He is not involved whatsoever. That's another travesty of this thing. He had nothing to do with it whatsoever. However, you're not able to produce any evidence because they only need to show probable cause, which is a very low standard, to have people arrested and then subsequently uh, extradited to Japan. And, you know, there's a reason why there's only two countries that have extradition treaties with Japan, which is South Korea and the United States. No other country on Earth has an extradition treaty with them for good reason. And it's, it's difficult to say, how can we be the beacon of human rights when we're taking our citizens and during a worldwide pandemic and, you know, they're really no conviction or, or lacking evidence and we're told that jumping bail is not a crime there and you're going to put us on a plane and ship us over there, especially disabled American veterans during a worldwide pandemic. Look, we know the story very well. I knew from the get-go what had taken place here. The Japanese government did not want Carlos Ghosn to merge Nissan, which is a Japanese jewel, with Renault. And they were going to merge those two companies. And Carlos Ghosn was treated incredibly unfairly. He told me some of the things that he faced. There is a 99.5% conv uh, percent conviction rate in Japan. So basically what they want to do is just uh, torture you until they get a conviction so that they could put you in jail, you would be facing that should you go back to Japan. That's absolutely right, Maria. That's exactly what they're going to do to us. There's no surprise here whatsoever. That's why it's incredibly shocking that our State Department would just simply, without any explanation, stick to American citizens on a plane to go get tortured. You are a Green Beret. You had top secret clearance. You participated in several missions across the world. Have you reached out to any of your military officials to ensure that the U.S. government understands what you are up against, a, a, a former military man of the United States government now being uh, potentially shipped back to Japan and facing extradition and then facing potential torture by the Japanese government because clearly they're embarrassed that Carl Carlos Ghosn left. That's absolutely correct, Maria. And, uh, yeah, the military uh, uh, veterans organizations are aware of this, you know, connect, connectingvets.org. There's a reporter there, Jack Murphy. He's done a great job reporting on this and keeping people up to speed. But, again, at the end of the day, it's the State Department who makes the final decision, not the courts. Um, and, you know, I guess only the president can turn this around. And I can't believe for one second that uh, our president of the United States, President Trump, does, knows about this, because I just can't see him sending his veterans and, and American citizens overseas to be tortured for something that should have never happened, and there's no case precedent in it either. How? What's your connection to Carlos Ghosn? Your wife is Lebanese, is that right? I know that Carlos Ghosn is Lebanese. Yeah, there's act, they are, they're actually related. And would I understand that in Japan, that if there's a relationship to the person who jumped bail, you can't be charged uh, anyway. So, you know, this thing just keeps getting more bizarre. But unfortunately, once you're over in Japan and in, in their judicial system, you're subjected to the torture in whatever conditions they so desire. How are you being treated right now, Michael? The management and the staff here are phenomenal. They are very professional. They have a, a great atmosphere. They treat everybody with the utmost respect. So I really can't say enough about that. But the bottom line is it's still the county jail. Uh, I, I just want to be clear. You want the State Department and President Trump to understand what you are up against. You are being uh, extradited to Japan for helping Carlos Ghosn get out of prison. And you are asking, please, not to send you to Japan. That's correct. But he was not in prison. He was free on bail.
My thanks to Michael Taylor, who is sitting in a Massachusetts prison. I want you to know that I reached out to the State Department and the Department of Justice. I have not heard back in an official capacity. One source did tell me, remember, a Green Beret takes an oath of office to follow the law. This guy did not according to my source. Carlos Ghosn himself will join us momentarily with some reaction to this incredible